Next on Win News, what the election result means for Tasmania, anger over more penguin deaths and all the latest in local sport and weather, I'll see you very shortly. Across Tasmania, this is Win News. Tonight, One Nation's Tasmanian election campaign ends in flames. Bass and Braddon set to give Scott Morrison a majority. While Labor tries to work out what went wrong. Good evening, I'm Bruce Roberts. Also tonight, a big contract for boat builder Incat and a strong response to more penguin deaths. Police are investigating a dramatic fire in a Hobart shopping centre car park that Pauline Hanson claims was a political attack. A One Nation campaign car torched while one of their candidates was grocery shopping. A fiery end to an election weekend. A One Nation campaign vehicle going up in flames. Mahalia Carter, Win News. The marginal seats of Bass and Braddon look set to deliver Scott Morrison an unlikely majority government. The Liberals reversing a by-election loss in the North West, while in Bass the vote counting continues, but the signs are not good for Labor. With just over 83% of the votes counted, the seat of Bass is still tight, but looking like a Liberal outcome. The swing in the candidate's favour, one of the best birthday presents she could have asked for. Eleanor Watt, Win News. Labor is examining what went wrong in northern Tasmania as it accuses the Premier of inflaming the state's north-south divide. But observers say the ALP failed to counter the Liberal attacks or sell the benefits of their tourism policies. Playing on Tasmania's north-south divide proved a winner for the Liberals, highlighting Labor's commitments to Mona and an AFL team. It leaves them a nasty taste in the mouth. I think that you'd, anyone think it was appropriate to use Mona of all things as a political football to try and divide and wedge Tasmanians. When Attention will shift from federal to state politics on Thursday when the Treasurer hands down the budget. Peter Gutman is promising a surplus and a big spend on infrastructure, but Labor says there's a black hole in health to fill first. The Treasurer feeling confident ahead of Thursday's state budget. That's the sound of the economy in the background, roaring pastors. Tasmanian shipbuilder Incat has secured a contract to build the world's largest aluminium ship. The 130 metre long vessel will operate between Argentina and Uruguay and will be Incat's ninth ship for South American customer Bookabus. It's estimated the vessel will carry 2,100 passengers, 220 cars and the world's largest duty free shop fitted on a ship. The physical construction will commence as soon as the detailed design drawings are completed and approved. And after the break this Monday on Win News, Tasmania anger over the death of more penguins and honouring the volunteers who make the state a better place. Central Coast Council says dog owners must take more responsibility following the deaths of up to 18 penguins at West Olveston. Dogs are already banned on the beach where the carcasses were found. Council angry at the owners not following the rules. This beach in West Olveston should be a haven for little penguins, with dogs banned from roaming the area. An Evandar brewery has reaped the rewards for its labour, coming home with a swag of medals from the Australian International Beer Awards in Melbourne. Van Diemen Brewing securing seven medals in total, including a gold for their fruited wild ale called Claude. The beverage is entirely farm sourced featuring hops, barley and yeast all from within a 400 metre radius. Close to 2,600 brews were entered in the awards from 400 breweries across 26 countries. Race car driver Marcus Ambrose is helping to inspire the next generation of automotive workers. The champion is driving a project that will see more than 80 young people from Launceston rebuild the car to race at Bathurst this November. This Volkswagen Golf will soon be given a makeover. It's local industry, local business uh, looking after their own and not everyone's... Um... It's time for sport with Amy Duggan. A big weekend in the TSL and North Lonnie says its ladder position is not relevant. That's what it says, Bruce. The Bombers are in first place, but the coach says it counts for nothing. Plus, a Launceston Tornado star set to play representative basketball across the Tasman.
Australian sport, despite sitting at the top of the TSL ladder after eight rounds, North Launceston says it's focused on learning, not its ladder position. After surviving a scare against North Hobart last weekend, the Bombers responded in style, belting Kingborough on Saturday night. The reigning premiers were back to their best against the Tigers, cruising to a 113-point win. Brent Costello, Win News. The Launceston Tornadoes will be left with a big hole to fill for their road trip to Victoria this weekend. Star player Stella Beck heads to China later this week to represent New Zealand in three-on-three -three basketball. Beck was told of her inclusion in the national team last week. I was so excited when I got the news and then of course a little bit nervous that I had to miss some things but awesome. South Hobart coach Ken Morton says his side won't get any first choice players back from injury for this weekend's Lacassell Jack Cup semi-final against Olympia. Despite up to five of the stars being sidelined, the three-time Tasmanian NPL champions are sitting in equal second place in the league. Their latest win coming against Kingborough, four goals to two at Darcy Street yesterday afternoon. We played uh, exceptional football in the first 45 minutes, moving it around well, uh, double teaming down the flanks and uh, we scored some super goals, so I thought it was a good performance. South Hobart's Lacquer Cup semi-final will be held at 1 o'clock on Sunday at Darcy Street. That is our sport, Bruce. Thank you very much for that, Amy. We have Hayley Francis joining us now in the studio with the weather. Hello, Hayley. How are we shaping up tomorrow? Good evening, Bruce and Amy. Well, it looks like we'll have a bit of a mixed bag, fine for much of the East Coast and showers elsewhere. All the details up next. Welcome back. Well, a band of clouds swept over Tasmania this morning, bringing scattered showers across most of the state. Now, tonight's weather picture is thanks to Karen, who snapped this from Bridgewater, a glorious rainbow over the Derwent. If you would like to see one of your photos on screen, please send them to tasweather at windnetwork.com.au. Let's have a look around the state today. Flinders Island topped out at 17 degrees, winds gusted to 46 k's at King Island. Mount Wellington had a minimum temperature 5 degrees above the monthly average and Hobart topped out at 14 degrees, but it did feel at least 5 degrees cooler in the early afternoon. On the charts, a trough is expected to cross Tasmania tonight with a west-to-northwesterly flow to follow tomorrow. An embedded cold front will weaken over the state early Wednesday with the next cold front to pass over the south during the day. On to the waters. In the north, west and northwesterly winds up to 25 knots tomorrow. In the east, seas up to 2 metres on a southerly swell for the south coast. North to northwesterly winds up to 30 knots. And in the west, a southwesterly swell up to 4 metres offshore. There is a strong wind warning in place for many coastal areas tomorrow. That includes a small craft alert for the southwest lakes. Now, tomorrow, more showers are expected about the northwest and far south of the state with a possible thunderstorm for the west coast. As for the rest of the state, mostly fine conditions. Now, interstate tomorrow, blue skies in Darwin and partly cloudy in Brisbane. And looking ahead closer to home for Burnie, we'll have a string of cloudy days ahead, single-digit loads from midweek. For Launceston, there's a slight chance of a shower tomorrow, the mercury slipping to 6 degrees on Thursday, and in Hobart, partly cloudy skies in the days to come, and maximums hovering around the high teens throughout the week. So some cooler mornings later this week, Bruce. Warm clothes are coming. Thank you very much for that, Hayley, and thanks for your company tonight across Tasmania. See you tomorrow at 6. This has been a Win News presentation. Win News, Regional Australia's number one news source.